Philadelphia, ironically nicknamed the City of Brotherly Love, is one of the most violent cities in North America. For the police, that means facing dangerous situations every day. Get up. Hold on. Don't move. Don't. Don't move. Police, go. 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 Back off. Back off. And when the action gets too hot, the SWAT team comes to the rescue. Turn the vehicle off. Over the back. In the back, Bill. Turn the vehicle off. These super cops have to face shootouts, barricades, hostage situations, and murderers on the loose. Police! Water! They are law enforcement's last hope in situations that sometimes look more like urban warfare than police work. Fear is, is definitely a factor, and, and I, everyone has fear. If you're not fear, you wouldn't be human. But I, to say I'm not afraid, I, I'd be lying to you. I mean, no, I'm not afraid on every job, but there's different jobs. If you're human, you're going to think. You know, you're gonna, someone's going to tell you this can be dangerous. Officers Bill Hunter and John Reckner are members of Philadelphia's Special Weapons and Tactics Unit. Between calls for barricade and hostage situations, they patrol the streets of the city's toughest neighborhoods. Police, go! 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 Back off! Back off! When you get into the busier districts, the cops are there because they want to be there. You see all these 25th District cars here every single time. And we're racing to beat them there because there's going to be an arrest. We're trying to get it, and they're trying to beat us here. But that's a great, that's a good sign. Aboard the Philadelphia Police Department helicopter, everything looks calm, but don't be fooled. The city of brotherly love has a dark side. In Philly, there are twice the number of aggravated assaults and rapes than the national average, and three times the number of murders. There were 348 homicides here in 2003. That's almost one dead body every day. With those kinds of stats, police officers don't have to look very hard to find some serious action. Okay, first name, Mary, date of birth, 8-7-1958, black male. John and Bill heard the call. Uh, we just received information there was a shooting at uh, 1600 Taney Street. We received information that the male who committed the shooting is driving a silver Chrysler. He's a black male, about six foot tall, with a black scully cap and a black hoodie. When the police dispatcher gets new information on certain incidents, it is instantly broadcast on every police radio in the city. It's called flash information. That's the term that we use to gather information on our assignment. Whether we're on patrol and there's a robbery just occurred, the more we know, the more chance we have of making an apprehension. The description of the man, his car, the gun used, all that sounds familiar to John. He thinks he knows who the shooter might be. Right here, right on Marston Terrace, as you turn in, it's an Oldsmobile. It's the second one, and it's, it's a gray Oldsmobile. There's no tag on it, so that's the car. That's the car. The gray Oldsmobile is there with a man inside. They have to be cautious. If it is the gunman, he will be armed, and both cops know that he probably won't hesitate to use his gun again. Don't, don't move. Don't move. What's your name? Don't even move. Why? Let me see him. Let me go over. All right, cuff him up. Let me see. See hands. I will appear nice. Uh, if their attitude changes quickly, so will mine. All right, cuff him up. Lean up. What's your name? Suddenly, the suspect makes a move. I said not to give me a problem, didn't I? All right, all right, he's all right. Leak's okay. He's not big. You're okay. All right, you're okay. Relax. I know. Relax. People don't want to get locked up. I mean, they don't want to. They want to run. They don't want to get locked up. They know they're doing something wrong, and that's their job to run. And I guess it's our job to catch them. 
I mean, it's not always a fight. You're just trying to, you're trying to place the cuffs on them. If they don't want to go, it's hard. I mean, you could be a 220 pound guy and there could be a 120 pound guy running. You're chasing him, you catch him. If he don't want to get cuffed, there's going to be hard to cuff him. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. I ain't doing nothing, officer. This not my uh, car. He's wanted for a armed robbery shooting, so. Just drove by. We had a shooting a little while ago. Car matches the description. He, he's wanted anyway, so he's locked up, but we're gonna have somebody come over to see if it's a positive ID or not. So. All right, it's a good hit. John calls for backup. Uh, you can make this the 20th. At the same time, the suspect's family is now gathering outside. Among them is the suspect's mother, and she has no intention of helping the two cops arrest her son. He's got a warrant anyway, man. A warrant? Sorry. Just relax, man. We might, there's a warrant for him. Just relax. Another, yes. Another warrant. You remember, I, I stopped him before, and I spoke to him about something. I said there might be a warrant. Remember you were out here? Call for a car. Yeah, I got a car coming. Just, just relax. We'll explain it to you. Just relax. You're not going in that car. Yo, shut that door. No, he, you're not locked because the car is going with us. Where's the keys? I don't know him. The man, okay. the woman has the keys. See I need the keys, keys, man. You gave the keys. I gave her a key. I need the keys. I, ma'am, I need the keys to the car. Don't make things worse. Your son's not in trouble for the no, shooting. He drove him to the hospital. Well, then why are you got him? OK? Ma'am. Relax. It's OK. The suspect finally admits right. that he was at the scene of the crime. This is just what happened. I know what just happened. Yeah, he got we shot. Somebody got, got shot, man, and I had to rush him to the hospital. OK, you rushed him to the hospital. Hell yeah. Then relax, chill out. He admitted to us that he dropped the person off the hospital after he was shot. Shots were exchanged from this car and outside at a location. We just arrived here, so we're not sure. We're going to wait for the, uh, supposedly there's a videotape at a store, so. He's locked up anyway for a shooting and a robbery from a, pr a previous warrant. Other police officers are rushing to the scene. The suspect, handcuffed, is placed in another car. It's going to be a PA tag of Frank Victor Pat. John and Bill search the vehicle looking for evidence. Dude's got a 45, but it's, I'm going to find They know that there is a gun somewhere. He fled the scene, too. Really? From uh, the other shooting from uh, Taney. Shoot. All right, well, this is the car. Thanks. Bill can't find the 45 caliber revolver, but the search is just beginning. I'm going to get towed and then print it for prints. Oh, I'm put on a property receipt. <sighs> and probably part of a crime scene. It's a good hit. The suspect has a history. He was previously arrested for attempted murder, but was released. Sometimes, like, would say they, you lock him up for an attempted murder. That person that they, they shot has to show up in court. And what happens sometimes is they will get to them before they go to court and threaten them, and they are intimidated, and they will not show up. When they don't show up, then the charges are thrown out. So now he's back on the street. Uh, please. Later on, John gets a call from one of the detectives who is searching the suspect's car. Uh, in the trunk, they recovered a bulletproof vest, uh, some ski mask. Uh, we have information that there's another vehicle involved. Uh, the detectives are going to look into that vehicle, and hopefully they could recover some more evidence, maybe find another gun. We had some information that there was a 45 caliber handgun that was used, and I also had information from an informant that he was carrying a 45 caliber handgun. With a bulletproof vest and a ski mask found in his car, getting him off the streets may have saved someone's life. Back at police headquarters, Lieutenant Mangini is working hard to set up a complex SWAT operation. They have a warrant to arrest a man wanted for murder. He is presumed to be armed and dangerous. What's more, he'll be coming out of a big concert and there will be a lot of people around. His intention is to head down to the Wachovia Center for a concert and 
naturally we do not want him to get inside there, so we need to uh, intercept him before he makes his way to, uh, to that location. The operation is extremely risky and will demand absolute precision. An armed man with nothing to lose, standing in the middle of thousands of innocent people, could spell disaster. We're going on a premise that he could and should be armed and dangerous. Just another day in paradise. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Bill and John will be part of the strike unit. This is a different job. This isn't a house. This is another job that it's, it's going to take a little work. We're going to sit down for a while. We're actually going to come in early and we're going to think about what we're going to do because it's not a house. We're going to be actually waiting for somebody to show up and he's going to be in a car. So it's going to be totally different than what we're used to. I'm excited about it. I hope things go well. The hour has come. The show will be starting soon. Close to 20 members of the unit are part of the operation. This is a high visibility, high risk maneuver. Captain Cross is briefing the guys. This is the guy we're looking for. You're all going to get copies of this guy. OK? Changes his hair a lot. You can see those, those crew, crew cut. You've got three different pictures of him, right? He's one on homicide. He hangs. His boys are the young guns who are performing at the center tonight. Show starts at 7 o'clock. We're going to have two guys right here in plain clothes. Everybody has to identify themselves when they come in off 11th Street and go down that ramp. So we're going to have two guys along with some Spectrum security taking a look, looking in there and IDing these guys, OK? If this guy is in one of these limos, we we're going to have a truck down here. We're going to take him down right on this ramp here, OK? When they spot him, we're going to call in the troops. We're going to take this guy down. We don't want to do it inside the building. There's too many people inside the building. These are bad dudes coming in here. So don't everybody concentrate when we get this guy, take him down. Four or five, get him, grab him. The rest should be turning towards the crowd, make sure nobody's jumping our backs or anybody's pulling any while we're turned around. All right? Just so in case we need the uniforms or some extra muscle, we'll have them in this area. So besides us, we'll at least have 10 uniforms to help us out in case hits the fan. Bill and John, like all the officers, get their assignment for the operation. Assignment. That includes what kind of weapon they get to carry with them. Hunter, Rector, Sam 112, you'll have an MP5 and one carbine, okay? One M4 carbine. You're going to post yourself on 11th Street. Bill and John won't need to put on high protection body armor, but they will wear a bulletproof vest capable of stopping a projectile going 3,000 feet per second. Yeah. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Their weapons, the MP5 and the longer range M4, have been the workhorses for the Army and law enforcement agencies everywhere for a long time. They are semi automatic assault rifles that can shoot over 10 bullets every second. Fear is, is definitely a factor, and, and I, everyone has fear. If you're not fear, you wouldn't be human. But I, to say I'm not afraid, I, I'd be lying to it. I mean, no, I'm not afraid on every job. But there's different jobs. If you're human, you're going to think. Exactly. You know, you're going to, someone's going to tell you this can be dangerous, but I, I do it. Everyone is at their strategic location. They now have to wait for the suspect to show up. It's time for some last minute studying. I've never met him before, but uh, I've been studying the photo now and the different photos that I have, and I have picked out a couple features that I'm going to look for. So if I do see him, I'm sure that I would be able to recognize it. You know, you look at the face, you look at a feature that guy's nose or can't you can change yeah you can't change your lips your nose your ears just different things you can pick out the crew is in place and waits for three hours we're sitting here we're just waiting I mean it's all you can do a lot of times we wait longer than that we'll wait on a barricade there's sometimes seven eight ten hours and finally, there it goes. It's coming our way, Bill. It's coming our way. It's us. The suspect's van has been spotted, and it's going right by where John and Bill are posted. Everything is going according to plan. The van is immediately surrounded by the SWAT team. Bill runs up to the van. Turn the vehicle off. Oh, in the back, in the back, Bill! Turn the vehicle off. Turn the steering wheel, my man. 
He knows that if the suspect is in it, he may be armed and dangerous. It's off, it's off. It's off. Yeah. The operation went down perfectly, except for one small detail. The suspect is not in the van. And obviously, nobody in the van knows what is going on. Stand by. Well, obviously, the guy, wasn't, the guy we're looking for is not there. Uh, he may have got word that we were out here. There was five people in the van when it went in, and only four when it left. But the guy that was supposedly the guy we were looking for in the red was the guy who was inside the van, but it wasn't him. They all had ID, and it wasn't him. We don't think he's here. I mean, if he knows by now. We stop all these guys. They're on their phones. We didn't let them use their phones, but now they're probably using them, so they're probably off telling them. They're probably talking to them right now. We don't know. Get him another day. He's hiding. I mean, he's going to be hiding for the rest of his life. And these guys are going to keep traveling around with him. He's going to get caught. It's just a matter of time. But today was his lucky day, I guess. So. The suspect wasn't where he was supposed to be, and that is very frustrating for the cops. Not only did they waste several hours, but more importantly, a suspected murder is still on the loose. John and Bill will put away their assault weapons and go back to patrolling the streets of Philadelphia. Here, the action is non-stop. Within minutes, they have to respond to a call for a robbery and a shooting. In Philadelphia, there is a robbery or a theft committed every nine minutes. Am I shot? The victims were held for more than 15 minutes by men who they never thought would rob them. Call the car. Yeah, a dark car, dark. Get in the window, get in the window. Down here. I can't. It went that way, whatever which way, it went that way. All right. To get inside the house, the robbers said they were cops, wearing badges, guns, and even bulletproof vests. Well, that, that could be twofold. That could be one that make people right. think they're cops, and two, maybe they're ready for a shootout. They said dark rays, Fabi Luna? Yeah. Some bystanders may have seen them. Ask these guys at older. See if they see Mike fly by our Luna. Yeah. You never know. Hey, guys, how you doing? What we're looking for is a dark Chevy Luna. Did you see them go by? No. Kind of gray? No. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they just robbed somebody with a point of gun down the street. No, we didn't see them, bro. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Sure you will. <laughs> Bill sees a car matching the description given by the victims. It's parked in front of a takeout restaurant. Hey, Whose car is this? Whose car is right here? This car right here. It doesn't feel like it was running. It's not warm. It's not warm, Bill. What? It's not warm. Okay. Any weapons on you? The guys don't even have time to finish their search when the fake cops strike again. People. They just said they said that they were uh, police officers. And they broke they broke into the house. They locked them in the house and they robbed them. So this is the second one today. So we're gonna go see if we can find the car. Three black males, one was heavy set. But the trio of robbers know that the cops are breathing down their necks, so they choose to stay quiet for the rest of the night. Twelve hours later, Bill and John return to duty. Back to work. As soon as the guys set foot in the building, they are assigned to a barricade. Once again, it is a home invasion. Maybe they will catch the suspects from last night. This time, they put on the heavy protection, a bulletproof helmet, and a heavy-duty vest. Right now, the situation is not clear. Two men were arrested, but one robber is missing. A baby may have been shot. Uh, when we go to a barricade or a warrant, information would be uh, the person that we're looking for, how many other people are in the house, what kind of, if they have dogs in the house, what kind of weapons are registered to the house. The more we know, the better we can do our job. All right, let's head on down. We've got the long gun first? Yeah. 
Lieutenant Mangini yeah. gives the lowdown. Nobody heard gunshots. One guy came out saying... I asked these kids over here to hear me shoot and said no. No, one guy came out and said, pointed to his head, said they shot my child in the head. Uh, but nobody heard any gunshots. Right. But yeah. that don't mean anything. Right. All right. These people know what gunshots sound like, too. With three armed suspects reported here, John quickly makes the connection with last night's trio of police imposters. Three males pose as police officers. Every day. And they've been hitting drug houses with money. Yeah, they don't hit these houses for no reason. Right, exactly. I don't see a car. The car is supposed to be a, it looks like a cop car. Bill gets in a strategic position. Forget anybody comes out. If there's a shot to be taken, it'll be yours. If the robber decides to come out running, Bill may have to shoot. That's pretty clear. If they come out. Does it? Man. Uh, you have to go in, man. You have to go in, man. There's somebody in there. Come on. You got a shot. On the porch, yeah, yeah. They're on the porch. No problem. And then some new information makes things even more complex. Uh, there's somebody in the house next door that did not answer the phone, so they think they went in the house next door. Uh, I don't, we don't know yet. So we're actually watching both properties uh, until we can ascertain if, there's any, if we get a response from the original target location. Bill, John, and the lieutenant decide to go to the house next door and make sure that the people there are safe. The snipers are ready to act if this turns into a shootout. Police. police! The police! Police! Police, man! It's been an hour since the SWAT unit was deployed. Two guys are caught. They got caught walking out. Okay, so there should be one more in there. Hey, there's a kid shot in the old kid. Yeah, yeah. Supposedly, some, some of the kid was supposed to be shot in the head, but no one was talking about it. Detectives and a negotiator arrive with new information. Okay. So, uh, any, I, I any, know, any injuries to anybody? No. Nobody shot? No. Nobody shot. No, no gunshots were fired inside either. At first, we heard rumor of right. that. Was it the kid shot? shot or something? Yeah. But unfamiliar. It's unfamiliar. So, the next move is this. Using a handheld PA system, the negotiator is trying to make contact with the third suspect who is presumed to still be hiding in the house. It's been two hours now, and there's still no sign of the robber. There were three males that entered the house, and so far two of them have been apprehended. We're not sure where the third person is, whether he got out or whether he's still in the property. So negotiations are going on to determine whether or not he's inside the property. At some time, if there's no response, some will make a determination for us to enter the property and see if he's there. I think they're gone. Why would they wait around? I think they had a chance to go. If two of them got caught, it's Two of them got caught, yeah. He's hiding in the house. The decision is finally made to make a move. An officer goes to get the breacher. The breacher's responsibility is to get the doors open for you. What we use is a ram. Our ram probably weighs about 40 pounds and has a two-handle bar on there. And when it's used correctly on a hinge or a lock, it will take it right through the wood. They are now seconds away from making the entry. Once inside, anything can happen. Your guard's always up. When you're going to enter a house, you don't know what to, you don't know what to expect. You're, you're really the threat levels there. You'll you go in and you look around, and you actually are also looking for the doer or the bad guy. You know, you're looking. I I get nervous about it. You know, I always had that touch of you know, like that dizzy feeling in my stomach now and again before you go into a house. But you know, that keeps you sharp. You know, you don't want to be not nervous about it. You know, the more nervous you are sometimes, you know, it peaks your senses, you know, you're more prepared for what happens. At moments like these, the members of the SWAT team rely on their training and techniques to make a safe entry. There's a technique used by the entry team, which all bases will be covered by the first man, the second man, and the third man. And uh, this technique will cover all the angles of the room and any kind of threat that they can encounter as they make their entry. The suspects possibly had body armor. Our first man in used a carbine, which is a shorter version of an M16, which is body piercing armor. It's possible that the shotgun or the MP5 might not pierce body armor. 
One in the chamber. Which they were looking, just... they were looking for Prince. Okay, well, thank you. We were there for a few hours. We're waiting. It's a waiting game. You wait, wait, and wait. And then in five seconds, it's over. We made our entry. Uh, the third one was not there. However, there was a chrome plate automatic revolver right in the doorway. It had about four assignments where home invasions occurred with three males, including a chrome-plated chrome automatic weapon. Uh, no, I, mean, I believe it's probably the same offenders. And life goes on. Uh, thanks. Hey, have a great Christmas. Right? It is 4 a.m., and the morning crew of the SWAT unit is about to serve two warrants. Scott, you know what I mean? Rebel, sir. Teddy, sir. Crawford, sir. The information about the suspect would send shivers down the spines of most people. For the SWAT members, it just tells them what they will be up against. Uh, it's a search warrant and arrest warrant for a 22-year-old black male. Uh, this house belongs to uh, girlfriend's parents. All right, he's accused of shooting his father. He shot his father. And uh, they said, uh, I just got off the phone with the detective. The father don't look good. Most of the people we're dealing with, they're through, with warrants. They're wanted. It's a high-risk warrant. They're wanted for a, a serious crime, whether it's be narcotics or a robbery or homicide. You just always have to be ready. As we go in, your position in line determines your assignment. Each person has a different assignment. And when you make your entry, your main focus is your assignment. Just listen up. The lineup's going to stay uh, front containment. Use a 113, the Petro, an MP5, Riley, have a handgun. Uh, a marrow, a shotgun, Scott, handgun, and uh, bring a pry bar with you. Different weapons are used for different goals of our entry. The first man in will usually carry a long gun, whether it be a shotgun, uh, M16, or an MP5 weapon. The second man in will usually carry his handgun. It makes him more mobile. When you carry a long gun, being the first man in, it makes you less mobile. Second floor, uh, Rebel with a shotgun, Facetti a handgun, Lieutenant will have a flashbang. Flashbang is a diversion technique that we use to catch someone off guard, catch them by surprise, to give us the edge. OK, this, it's a uh, two-story brick row. <clears throat> it's a marked property. It's got storm door, uh, a wooden. Wooden glass inside door. Richie, make sure you uh, cover yourself up there, right? Uh, this detective says that uh, he's got a real good feeling that this gun's in this house, right? Everybody understand our assignments? <clears throat> Everybody understand our assignments? Yes? OK. OK. Frank from Lehigh. The guys all get to a location close to where they will strike. It is called the staging area. They put on their equipment. They wear the heavy-duty bulletproof vest, a bulletproof helmet, and an advanced communication system. The sergeant meets with the detective in charge of the case to get more information. Yeah, I got three great witnesses. Plus dad identified him. I'm sorry. Plus his father identified him in the hospital and nodded. He's got a trait. He's He coded at least three times. He coded on the way to the hospital. This guy is just not meant to die. Everyone gets into position. Some will be part of the entry team. Others will be the rear and front containment. Let's make sure nobody runs out the back or out the front or tries to hurt the entry team as we're going up. Okay, so the entry team sneaks close to the house without making a sound. The element of surprise may be their biggest ally. They want to catch him off guard and hopefully away from his weapon. The entry team leader bangs on the front door, hoping to surprise the suspect. Police! Warrant! On a warrant, we will knock and announce. And there's a specific time required for them to open the door. Police! If they don't, the door isn't opened in that required time, then the breacher will force the door open. After a few seconds, someone finally opens the door. A few more seconds, and the SWAT unit would have broken it down. It is now safe for the detectives to get inside. 
The SWAT unit has done its job and secured the place. The girl in the, he's not in there, but the girl in the striped shirt is Jennifer. That's, that's the girlfriend. The SWAT unit serves almost 300 high-risk warrants every year. To last in this job, you have to walk a thin line between going all out and not taking every job too personally. You know, we're there, and you see, how, we're all, you were in a car, we're all hyped up. But it, it, when it's so fast, when it's over, it's over, then, yeah, we were all disappointed. I mean, we were all, we wanted to catch him. We wanted to catch the bad guy. That's why we're there. If you harp on things too much, uh, it eats you up inside. No luck. No luck. Next time. But Lady Luck smiles at the last moment. I ain't do it. The suspect is caught down the street while trying to sneak past the policeman. How old are you? No. Come on. My mom. No, man. Come on, my mom. I'm a no man. Wife. You, you wish you came too, man. You didn't want to go to work. work. Now you don't got to go to work. You don't have to go to work. You're right. right. I'm trying to tell you, I've been down there. Actually, when you're serving warrants, like the warrant was served for homicide, that's a serious warrant. Now, this, that's a bad guy. I mean, he's he killed somebody. The SWAT unit goes back to the station. Awaiting them over there is another briefing for another warrant. He's a 21-year-old black male. He's wanted for murder. They had a, uh, on the 5th of March, they had a, uh, it was a drive-by killing is what it was. They uh, carloaded people, bought some drugs. They didn't like what they got. They went back and they, uh, they did up the corner with a, uh, I believe it was an AK-47. Every little detail about the house and the surroundings are given to everyone. They don't want any surprises. It's got a white uh, security door. It's got an enclosed porch. Uh, you keep that in mind, OK? Who's the first one in? I think the first person in would be the dang most dangerous, because if somebody's waiting in there with a gun, you're the first person he sees. Picture it like a funnel, and you're coming through it. And if you were to stop in the middle of it, everything gets banged up and clogged up behind you. We all have an assignment. When the first floor people come in, the second floor people are right behind them. But as like I said, everybody has a different assignment, and your job is to stick to that assignment. As long as you stick to your assignment, all goals are achieved. After meeting at the staging area, the unit is on its way to the suspect's house. Well, we're going to give him a good morning welcome. door is quickly answered, and this time the suspect is nowhere to be found. Every operation of the SWAT unit has to be flawlessly executed. Every little detail can mean the difference between life and death. So for the SWAT unit, as with anybody else, practice makes perfect. Being in SWAT, uh, we have outstanding equipment and a lot more training than a regular patrol officer does. So I think sometimes the guys in SWAT are a lot more prepared than a regular patrol cop. You do it right here, you're gonna do it right when you're when you're out when you're in a house, you're gonna you're gonna aim right, you're gonna hit center mass where you're supposed to hit. That's why we do these drills. The analogy that I use it won't be like a pool shooter. Who can shoot pool every night on a consistent basis and maintains a certain level of proficiency. If he doesn't go out and shoot pool for a couple months, the first time he walks back in, it will lower down. The ability to come up here will help us maintain a higher proficiency of handling the weapon. I think with the stress, a lot of times, you will do things without thinking, and sometimes you're, just your skill kicks in, and you might even do a little better. You need much more than a sharp eye and a taste for danger to make the cut as a SWAT member. 
All the protection and equipment they are wearing can weigh as much as 70 pounds. And we first put that stuff on. We were out there just observing jobs, different warrants. I tell you, it was heavy, but you get used to it anyway. It's like anything else, your body gets used to it. And then we had work out, and that helps us keep in shape. Back on the streets after their training session, Bill and John are assigned to assist some officers who have made an arrest. And they respond to the sergeant. Saw the male running down the street. He was trying to rack the gun. They jammed on him. He dropped it. They apprehended the male down the street. They picked up the gun. It was still jammed. They call us for weapons like this. I mean, it's a military-type weapon, and uh, if you don't have the know-how to unload it, make it sit, render it safe, then it's better just to call a like, SWAT unit. We'll come render it safe. And they'll take it down to ballistics. Uh, it's jammed <laughs> yeah, in it's there. jammed. You can see. It's a double feed. As yeah. soon as they secure the jammed weapon, another Put call in comes there. in. This time, it's for a robbery with a possible hostage situation. Personally, person with a gun. This could be a barricade. Yeah, we're not that far. We're in actually pretty good position for this one. Next one down. Same one, Sam. We're pulling up like A Street. Uh, what's the flash? There's a black male by the name of Frank Jr. wearing a gray and black jacket, about five feet inches tall. We hope people get their will. 38. What's going on? You got a gun! You got a gun on me? Yes, he's Frank, is that you? Yes, it's me, okay. big guy. Sorry. Good, how you been? Is my uncle getting drunk doing the dumb again? Who's in the house now? Uh, it's my uncle Billy in there. All right. He's in there by himself? Yes. Hey, Uncle Billy. Yeah. Everything all right? The man who called in is obviously drunk, but that doesn't mean that he is not telling the truth. Okay, who called? I called. Okay. Did you see a gun? I see one. Where at? He took it upstairs. Bill goes upstairs and finds that the caller was right. There is a gun. Uncle Billy. Can we show you a gun? Can you tell me if it's the gun or not? Is this what you saw? Is that what you saw? Is this the gun? Sit down. Okay, is this, is this the one you saw? Is this, is this the gun you saw? I don't know, sir. Does it look like it? Kind of favorite? Oh, no, no. I'm kind of favorite. I don't, I okay. Don't. All right, no problem. You can put your leg in. Okay, okay. Put your leg in. We'll take care of it all. It's just a uh, PlayStation gun. What is okay. That? That's what he saw laying on the table. I believe you. There are some funny situations that occur during our day. And I will come home and always tell a funny story, because that really breaks up the monotony of what, if they have any worries about what I do all day, I tell a funny story, and maybe they don't worry as much. Here, let me check this. There has been some development in the home invasion case. A victim recognized one of the three fake cops on a mugshot. The detectives followed the lead and found a car matching the description. Two men fled. The third one is hiding. John and Bill are on the spot in minutes, hoping to catch the elusive criminals. We, we left here. Is it the car? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. We just pulled away from there. We just crossed over Broad Street when the call came out, man. Um, is it the car? It's the car. It's the street. Show us the car. We're going to look at the car in the car. At the top of the car. Park down the end of the block. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, sorry to you guys walk all the way out. Just built. Just built. So they got one person? Did he get any of the guys? No, they lost the one guy. 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 Did anybody check this? Look at it right there. The police helicopter arrives on the scene. Its state of the art technology is a very much needed addition to the operation. There was possibly a shooter in the back alleyway. Everybody emptied out of the alleyway. Air attack unit went above it and used what they call a thermal heat sensor. And a thermal heat sensor would pick up any kind of heat from a person hiding in the alleyway. Something that we couldn't see in the building. OK, there's the building in question. Now you see the officer standing there on the ground? Yep. That's the heat. Actually, you can see the front of their cars. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe the guy's over here. But the helicopter can't look inside the houses. And they can't. They can't see a thermal inside. This dangerous job is left to the officers. They said they didn't go in, right? He didn't go in. Watch the whole floor right there. Oh, yeah. 
We find the, some of the abandoned houses dangerous because as we make our entries into them, a lot of them are booby trapped with missing floorboards or uh, we had went into a, John and I had went into a house last week where we went into the back window, but before we stepped in, we looked down and there was a big square cut out. So if we weren't looking down and preparing ourselves for something like that, you could have fell straight through to the basement. Now the floor there, the floor wouldn't support anybody if somebody went in there. If he's hiding in this back alley, it's not going to be in that house because he could have never made it inside. Yeah, it's not fresh. But... John suddenly finds an important clue, fresh blood. Hey, Bill. Bill. Hey, Bill. Hey, guys, inside. He's inside here, dude. Hey, guys, inside here, there's blood, Bill. Yeah, it's not fresh, but well, let me see. It started over here, right? Here's the blood trail. Here, it started right here. Look. What? It looks like he got shot in a chair or something. There's blood on the chair. You can see right here. It's going all the way out to here. Blood trail comes right out here. So fresh. See it coming out here, trail. While Bill and John follow the blood trail, two of their colleagues from the SWAT unit arrest the elusive robber. Tonight, Philadelphia will be a safer place. Another day, another warrant for the SWAT team. He's wanted for attempt murder uh, with a gun. Line of march. Going to be rear, front, entry, entry. Rear, you guys are going to lead the way. You're going to go up to Corley Street. If you were to ask me what, what was my f favorite position in the stack, I'd have to be the number one guy. Um, because the rest of the team's all stepping off on, on your step. If you like your job, and you, you always want to be the first one to do something, right? You don't want to just say, oh, I want to be the last person. No, if you love do doing what you're doing, you want to be the first person. That's just the way I am. And everybody I work with pretty much on the same page. At the staging area, the detective gives out a picture of the suspect. All right, here's the guy we're looking for. It's a younger, younger photo. Here's your photo. Nice, nice. That's the guy? That's him. We'll get him. All right, OK. There is no room for improvisation or error. Any mistake could be their last one. We're going to pull up. We're all going to hook up together right at that corner. Front, as soon as they give you the word, you guys go right on down. The walk is about 20 feet down. 10 houses to your only way. We're all going to walk down, and we'll do what we got to do. Police, let me see your hand. Police, let me see your hand. Everybody has their own job to do, and if we do it right, uh, pretty much we'll come out okay. This operation went down perfectly. When they got to the door, the suspect was about to come out. They caught him. One minute later, and they would have missed him. I, they said, don't worry about it. We're taking everybody. We, we got everybody. All right, guys, back to the barn. Never thought I'd be want to go on the SWAT team. I had a chance to. I put my transfer in, and I went. Now, I'm, this, is some, this is all new to me. I've only been here about nine months, and most of that was training. So now I'm on the street, and I'm having fun. Ryan. OK. Hi, Michael. Hello, Steven. Fighting crime is one thing, but prevention is also essential. And Bill is doing his part. He has been a volunteer wrestling coach for 15 years in a school in one of the toughest parts of town. I know I'm making a difference because, first of all, a lot of times you see when you're out there in the streets, they don't always look upon the police in a positive way. And these kids see a totally different side of me when I'm dressed up in my sweat clothes, running their practices, rolling around, taking them to matches every Saturday. So they see a totally different side of a police officer than someone on the street locking up everybody they know. But uh, they also know that I care about them all, and I would help them out in any situation. And this yeah, approach works. That's not right good. now, <laughs> there's about 15 or 16 guys that I coached in this level right here that are on the police force right now. There's even one who's in the FBI. There's one in the Secret Service. And I'm real proud of the ones that did well. 
After this quick stop at the school, Bill is back on the streets. Uh, we just got a call. There's a guy at Germantown in Orleans, which is right by Germantown, Indiana, wearing a black jacket and a skull. He's got a 40 caliber on him. If I was to get out of my car to stop someone or arrest somebody, uh, my eyes are on them. Uh, before I get out, my eyes are on the surroundings. As I get out, I have to focus on that individual. And as I approach him, my actions will also be the, uh, the circumstances that surround this now. His actions will dictate what I do. If he's going to be complacent, okay, not that I'm going to let my guard down, but I'll probably move up as quickly as possible before that complacency changes. There he is right there. Which one? Uh, black, uh, black hat or what? See, the one that's not in Zaire. Uh, which one is this Zaire? Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Just do it right here. Just pass him, pass him, pass him. Pass him. Down on the ground. Put your hands right there. Put his hand behind you. Don't move that hand, Don't my move man. Move that hand. The, it, as you're talking to them, you usually know their demeanor, and I, the threat level goes down. But you're always, you always gotta have your guard up. But it just goes down. Like, like when I'm getting out of the car, if I'm gonna stop you, and I think you have a gun. Yeah, I'm gonna treat you differently until I get a chance to see if you have, in fact, have that gun. Bill finds what he was looking for. John, no. You got it. Hey, man, see. Turn around. BB gun. It's a BB gun, yeah. This serves you no purpose whatsoever as far as, as self-defense goes. It could be used for intimidation in such a thing like a robbery. From a distance, someone can mistake something like this for maybe a 9 millimeter, and this could cause you a lot of damage. You get you killed carrying something like this on the street. If you get 50 gunmen, 1,000 kids in the school, people are going to die. This is a training exercise, but a hostage situation in a school is always a very real threat. The goal is to make a fast, effective, and safe entry. Mistake about it. Training pays. Yeah, you went a little bit, you know, too fast, but this is a this is a stage process. Up, two guys, call the other guys up. Turn the magazine, charge them up, and holster them up. The exercise has to be interrupted. A call just came in. It's a hostage situation. We received an assignment of a barricaded male inside of the house with a gun, and that's where we're headed to now. We just uh, received information of our staging area. We're going to go gear up, and our sergeant and lieutenant will give us our assignments. While he gears up, John gets some information from the first officer on the scene. We just had a training day at the academy. <laughs> what do we got going on? That's the way for it comes to our house. Uh, somebody lets him in on their way out. Right. He comes in, he comes up to her, and he tells her that uh, he wants to be with her, she tells him, get out, I don't leave you. And he said, okay, I'm gonna kill myself and pulls out a gun. So he does have a gun. And she ran. She said she saw something silver in the park, it was dark. Right. She ran, she has no shoes or anything. Oh, she's in the car now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Hmm? Ex-boyfriend, uh, you know, says he's starting to kill himself. He's got a gun. I'll have to go around the car? Yeah. Each situation is unique and needs to be analyzed before any action is taken. And a case involving a suicidal person demands finesse, not brute force. Any news? He's in there. Oh, he is in there? Yeah. Oh, good. They got uh, the rear containment, see some movement in the back rear windows. And since it was just him and his girlfriend that was living there and she's out here, he is on the phone. Right, right now on the phone with 911. Okay. SWAT members are sent to the front and the back of the house to look for any movement from the suspect. So I'm just going to check it out and make sure everything uh, 
Let's see how many people we need. We don't even know what the house looks like at this point. Um, a warrant entry is more of a dynamic entry. I mean, this could be a, a stealth entry, which would be a much slower process of zeroing in where this person is in the house and hoping to get himself to surrender without incident. Again, before sending in the SWAT, other strategies are taken into account to try to resolve the situation peacefully. They're going to probably get some negotiators to call on the telephone and talk. And uh, if he's in there, hopefully he can talk him to come out and surrender. He could be here all night long. All right, there's, there's, there's not, no one's at risk but himself, so they'll take as much time as they need. You know, near the holidays, and they're usually the bad ones. Even though they understand the depth of the human drama unfolding before them, for the officers, these situations are like game day for a professional athlete. For every job, you get a little rush. I mean, that's part of the job. It's, you know, turn on rush. I mean, you've seen the way everybody, since I heard barricade, everybody, we're training, everybody's happy. That's why we're here, you know, it's, we like, everybody's happy. Finally, the SWAT members won't have to yeah. put their skills to work. Well, the negotiator was able to negotiate the, uh, Surrender. He didn't want to harm himself. He uh, wanted to talk to his uh, his grandfather. And uh, once the grandfather was over there with the negotiator, he surrendered. And they did recover the silver semi-automatic handgun and uh, under the bathtub. So they did recover a gun. He did have a gun, but it worked out for the best. He surrendered. Dealing with criminals day after day, the guys have to avoid becoming yeah. cynical. They have to always remember that they are fighting crime to make these dangerous neighborhoods safer for honest people. So, I mean, regardless of its appearance, there are still a lot of good people who live in this area. Well, yeah, money, they can be a little older. Some of the people we talk to are older. Right. Are older. They're not, they're not young kids anymore. They were here their whole life. Just sort of on their own. They try to help us out as much as they can. And in, in return, we try to help them out. I never really think about putting my life on the line for, for somebody who doesn't appreciate it. I, you know, there's always that one person who you help who appreciates what you did for them. You know, whether it's a, a, a hostage rescue that you're doing or, you know, a barricaded person or just somebody on the street, you know, you stop somebody from getting mugged, they'll remember that, you know, a cop helped me out one day.